I'm Joe Johnson. I'm Jay Wilson. And this is 336 Mud Mafia. You know who the gang is, don't you? Of course I do. As you know, I am the founder and president of 336 Mud Mafia. Today with me I have Jay Wilson, which is also known as Jay Money. He is the vice president of 336 Mud Mafia. Also along with uh, another main character in these episodes. He's also one of the biggest ones we've got, other than myself, that helps load, wash, and ride, and create content for you guys. You think I'm gonna be able to leave this park without doing it myself? No. Uh, Goldgate about to hit it. I mean, hit it. It's just me, Jay Brown. Even got Cade with us today. He's gonna ride a pitter. No Joe or KK. Uh, they are on a anniversary trip, so I hope they're having a great time. Three Six Mud Mafia is currently sitting right at a little under 92,000 subscribers on YouTube, a little under 90,000 followers on TikTok, and a little over 50,000 followers on Instagram, and I'm not sure how many on Facebook, but it's a big growing platform across all streaming platforms. But it didn't just start out that way. We had to start from the absolute bottom. The very beginning was zero followers on all platforms and we've had to build it this far the way it is. Now by no means we're not the biggest off-road YouTube channel or the biggest YouTube channel in general, uh, but we have big inspirations to be the big YouTube channel on this streaming platform, which is YouTube. From my best recollection, October 29th, 2020, Mud Mafia broke the scene. Now I know your history with it is way deeper than mine, but. Yeah, I could go back a lot further than that. Uh, let's go ahead and kick him back into humble beginnings when uh, 336, before it was the Mud Mafia. It all started in Archdale Trinity, North Carolina, where I was born and raised at, right in the kind of the Piedmont Triad area. A pretty small town where everybody knows everybody, just like most of your guys' town that's watching this video. Everybody knows everyone here, and. It's a really simple town, not much to it. If you grew up here, most of the time you went to work as a truck driver, or you went to work as a welder, or you went to work building school buses, because uh, that's about all that's around here. But from a very young age, I was very blessed with a set of parents that kept me into all kind of stuff, such as sports and outdoor stuff, power sports, you name it. I was always outdoors with everything. At a very young age, I was uh, introduced to full wheeling, and my dad, he took me riding on his full wheeler for many years until I finally got my own for myself, and Christmas time came around, and. I remember Santa Claus brought that to me and that was probably one of the best Christmas I've ever had. And, and from that day on, I just stayed stuck to them like glue. Now growing up, I grew up in a split home. My mom and dad divorced when I was around three or four years old. So I always lived from my mom's house to my dad's house every week and weekend. In my dad's house, I stayed more on four wheelers and dirt bikes. In my mom's house, I stayed on horses most of the time. But I never could get it, took it away from the scene of off-roading with four wheelers and dirt bikes and being in the mud and going to the mountains riding, you name it. We was always in a trail somewhere, somehow on some kind of machine off-road. That's also where a, a bunch of my friend connections come along was uh, sharing the same love and passion for four wheelers. I mean, it was kind of just kind of a second nature to us. It was it was twice a month we were going to West Virginia. My dad had a camper up there and we were riding and and when we wasn't up in West Virginia, we was here around the house on my dad's property, my mom's property where we had trails and stuff and I was riding there with all my buddies over and they had their full wheelers there, dirt bikes and it was like almost a, a, a set thing. You knew that's what you were going to do that weekend at Joe's or that week or whatever. If we were out of school, you knew you were going to be on a full wheeler, you knew we were going to be riding and it was just nothing but fun. I mean, there was no YouTube then, there was no cameras being involved. It was, do I have enough gas to get to point A to point B? My mom and dad were uh, big into Harley Davidson's as well, and that's something that's also a big part of my life that a lot of you guys don't really see on this channel. If you guys got me on Snapchat or TikTok or maybe on my personal Instagram, you'll see a lot of my Harleys that I post on there, and 
that's another big part of my life outside of the off-road world. I mean, like I said, anything power sports, anything that's got wheels on it moves, I'm all about it. My dad was a truck driver, my mom was a postal worker, bartender, and a bus driver all at the same time. I didn't come from the Golden Spoon Rich house, I didn't come from a dirt floor poor house either, but I just, you know, average American home. But I was also provided for, and they also got me full wheelers and dirt bikes along the way as I was growing up, and they wasn't brand new, they wasn't top of the line, but they were something to ride and have fun with. I always told myself as I grew up I wanted to have brand new or nice, shiny new four wheelers or whatever it might be, the biggest and the baddest out there. And you know, you gotta start from the bottom. You gotta crawl before you can walk. As I got a little older, I actually wanted to get into dirt bike racing. I didn't really get into it as soon as I should have. Most of your kids that race dirt bikes, they start at a very, very young age. I really just rode dirt bikes for fun up until a certain point to where I wanted to race dirt bikes and thought I was going to be really good at it. And Come to find out, I really wasn't that great at it, but I had a s tons of fun doing it. Like It was probably one of the best experiences getting to do that stuff. and race and ride with some of the big names there at the local tracks and they put me in my place right away knowing that I need to go back to the trails just trail riding them dirt bikes instead of being on the track with them and showing out and all that good stuff. Throughout all my journeys of racing and trail riding my parents supported me tremendously. They, whatever my passion was for they were for it whether it be the sports I played whether it was off-road was whether it was anything like my mom she wanted to push me into horses quite a bit and I did I loved it I used to ride horses quite a bit my dad had me in hunting growing up fishing you name it, I was the normal little country boy, outdoors kid growing up. I mean, but it still never could drag me away from my true passion, which was off-road, four-wheelers, dirt bikes, side-by-sides, anything to do with power sports. I also have a sister that's about seven or eight years older than me that I spent a lot of time with growing up. She, uh, she had her own four-wheeler and we used to terrorize each other as most siblings do and it was a simple household then. It was, it was, uh, mom and dad both worked and went to school it wasn't nothing what nothing extravagant nothing was out of order nothing was just crazy as can be it was just a normal growing up amateur average american home i mean this is how it was going into high school where i went to school was trinity high school right there in trinity north carolina it was uh probably the best few years of my life i had a lot of fun in high school played some sports i actually had two jobs throughout high school i worked at a body shop and i worked at a gas station from time I was my sophomore year to basically when I graduated. When I turned 16, I'd saved up enough money and I got my first truck and I started working, paying off my truck and insurance and my phone bill and the fuel bill and you name it, whatever the case may be. I mean, I was, I was a really busy teenager, but I also made time for riding. Almost every weekend, guys would meet at the house and we'd take off, go riding. We'd go down to Uari, we'd go down to wherever and go riding four wheelers and dirt bikes. I mean, we just, that's just all we lived for was a dirt bike and a four-wheeler. I mean, it's just it's a, it's a, a drilling rush that I can't explain to where that's all we wanted to do nonstop. When I turned 16, I actually got a uh, personal loan out. My dad helped me and co-sign for me. And I got my first ever brand new four-wheeler on my own. Uh, I'm not real proud of it, but I mean, it's, it's cool to go back and think about it. It was the Arctic Cat 700. I've had like almost every four-wheeler brand you can have, like anywhere from Hondas, Yamahas, Kawasaki, Suzuki's. Arctic Cat, Polaris, and Can-Am, um, pretty much all of them. My fur, very first one I got for that Christmas was a Kimco. So, you know, I've kind of ventured out to all brands. Finally got rid of it, and when I got rid of it, I actually broke down and I went and bought a 2017 Razor XP1000 from World Class Power Sports in High Point. First one around my area, like everybody had to like an 800 or a 900 Razor, and I went and bought the very first 1000 XP out of my whole friend group. And, that's what we called Big Razor. That was, you know, you know, you see, you've seen it on the videos many, many times back in the day on early Mud Mafia. Probably one of the best machines I've ever had. I don't, we never placed one axle in it. Even after we lifted it 14 inches, Hell. no, yeah, we changed the belt one time in five years. I had it for five years. I mean, the brakes, we changed it in the oil, and that was it. And I couldn't believe it. But one of the best machines I've ever had. Everybody's always giving me heck about Big Razor. Don't hit no holes. I don't want it to hit holes, but this one time I'm gonna take it through the little play pond. Big ready to go work, boy. Oh. Hey, we're 360 game, baby. You heard me. <laughs> I 
Also during high school, I started doing some college courses at night and got my degree and certificates in welding. I mean, I already kind of knew what I was going in high school. I knew exactly going into it. I was good at some sports such as baseball. I wrestled for a little bit, but I knew I, wasn't, I didn't have a talent to get to the majors. I didn't have a talent for big scholarships and my parents didn't have the money to send me to big schools for scholarship money and any of that stuff. So I knew exactly where I was going. I was going straight to be a welder. My grandfather was a welder. Uh, fun fact. So, I mean, I knew that's kind of where I wanted to go. My stepdad taught me how to weld when I was about 10 or 11 years old. That's that. I mean, I started doing the welding courses, started taking them, and before you know it, I was ready to graduate high school. And then three days after I graduated high school, I went straight to work at 5.30 in the morning at a big company here in High Point, North Carolina. That's where I spent most of my years. I spent there for like three years, left there, and went straight to another big company, which is worldwide known, John Deere. Spent almost five years there as a welder. When I left there, I, I had made plans to go on first shift to another company that was in High Point as well and spent another year there, year and a half welding. That's about all I did. I mean, I just knew how to weld and ride four wheelers. Weld, ride four wheelers. I mean, that was just, that was my lifestyle and nothing wrong with it. I just wanted a little bit more. And you know, growing up, Osta Cruiser was a big part that paved the way for all of us off-road YouTubers. I watched Osta Cruiser quite a bit growing up because there wasn't really no YouTube when I was early 2000s and nobody was really doing that. And if you could have told me then, the young Joe at like eight, nine years old that I could be playing in the mud for a living. All I gotta do is video myself. I'd probably told you you're crazy because I always knew just hard labor work, just blue collar work. Now I'm gonna rewind you guys one more time. We gotta rewind back to 11 years old. So I brought a couple things in here with me today that I want you guys to see. This is something you guys know exactly what it is. This sticker is on most of your guys' four wheelers, side by sides, buildings, whatever, coolers, toolboxes, this sticker is all around the world right now. It ain't always looked like that. I actually brought something that my mom brought over to my house, uh, who knows, about six months ago, eight months ago, whenever I was 11, my dad had a good friend that printed off stickers. He had like a little workshop that he'd done stickers and decals, stuff like that. And I had asked him to make me three stickers. I had created an off-road ATV group whenever I was 11 with two other buddies, Jake and Dustin. It was me, Jake, Dustin, we all had a four wheeler piece. And I said, we ought to have a group and we could call ourselves something and ride fours around the neighborhood and hit all the local trails. I stuck mine on my four wheeler. Jake stuck his on his full wheeler and Dustin never got his sticker actually. So I, my mom being the pack rat that she is, which is a good thing, she keeps everything. She found this sticker after she had kept it all these years and gave it to me. This was one of the original stickers. It is the original Mud Mafia sticker that I created when I was 11 years old. That was the name I came up with and it's actually spelled M-U-D-D-M-A-F-I-A. -D -D Don't have the 336 in there of course, but that is what I came up with those many years ago. I mean, that's that's a wild. The, the transit paper has turned yellow. Like it's not even white anymore. <laughs> Look at that. That is a old sticker. My mom's kept it this many years. She brought it to the house and I figured you'd want this. And I was like, okay, that's great. So I would say the logo has changed quite a bit. Now it is for the good, because I don't, you know, I don't foresee us using the tire there. I don't even know what kind of tire that is, spinning up mud or dirt, but and the two D's on M U D D, but you know, it came a long way, guys, and I am super proud to be able to say that it's something that I have had in my mind pretty much most of my life. I mean, I knew I wanted to do something cool. I wanted to be a positive impact on many, many people. I wanted to be something that a lot of people from my area ain't. And you know, everybody's just kind of the same. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being normal, but I wanted to be extra. I wanted to do extraordinary things, do a lot more than my life than just punch in and punch out of a job every day nonstop. I want to make impact on people, be a bad financial influence on people. <laughs> Let's fast forward when I was, I was starting at John Deere. Um, I was 20, maybe 21 years old. I'd started at John Deere as a welder and I'm sitting there in the break room. I was on third shift. So I was eating lunch at three o'clock in the morning and uh, a buddy of mine, his name was Justin. He come up there and he sat with me and we're sitting there talking. He's like, man, we ought to start a, a ATV group or something. And I said, well, that, yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, I've always had it in the back of my mind, but you don't sit there and say that you want to be a YouTuber in front of like 
500 to 700 grown men with beards and tattoos and this greasy burly men that's welders i mean that's just not you don't speak about that you camera stuff ain't that's not their language you burn wire you drop the hood you're, you're building stuff non-stop blue collar so i humored his idea we started a, a little group and he's like what we're gonna name it and i said well let's let's call it 336 mud mafia and it just like clicked i mean his eyes lit up he's like man that sounds good you know not him not knowing i already had started something called Mud Mafia back in the day and I just added 336 to it. Why not? A lot of people say, where does that come from? Well, three plus three equals six. That's not really where it comes from, but that does make sense. But that's our area code. 336 is where we live at. That's Trinity. Archdale Trinity, Greensboro, Ashboro. I mean, it's Winston. It's That's the that's the area. So we started, we started an Instagram and a Facebook page and we had like 30 followers on Instagram for a long time. And we were posting like just us going riding with some funny captions and I actually if you go back to our Instagram page to this day you will see some of our very first posts I never deleted any of them I kept all of them and I think it was in the very beginning of October when I went down to Busco Beach for Fall Bash and there was some people there some other influencers that asked me what my YouTube channel was called because they seen we had like 10 guys that all had some shirts on I'd made like 10 shirts they're all black and they all just said Mud Mafia member and mine was said president and Justin's his said vice president. And I just said, well, I don't have a, you know, I don't have a YouTube channel. I just got an Instagram and a Facebook page. And they were like, well, you should definitely start one. You guys all match. Y'all guys have like all Can-Am four wheelers. You should definitely have a YouTube channel. You got the personality for it. I've always thought YouTubing would be amazing, it'd be cool after watching Austin Cruiser. Love to do it, but didn't know where to start, how to start, and I was like, nah, I just, you know, went in one ear and out the other. I got home, I done some thinking, and I said, you know what? They might they might be onto something. Around that time zone, I re relinked back up with Jay. Now, me and Jay grew up playing sports together in the same little community, and we knew each other, just didn't know know each other. And he had went out and bought a 2020 570 Can-Am Renegade, which is better known as Bumblebee. Hey, Jay Murray, what do you do, bro? What you doing? Walk the old Bumblebee one time. Give it a walk away. Don't hit the down. Big day, though. Come on now. Go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Go ahead with it. Can't forget about old Jay Money right here. Jay Money, the big yellow bumblebee. Can you do it one day for me? Hold on. Make that bike. Do the what for? <laughs> Jay Money. Uh oh. Jay Money hung up. No, bumblebee coming out. Look at a serious face right there. It was all stock. And at the time, I had a 2018, I bought brand new 570 Renegade Can-Am. And that was also known as Big Gate, the one that kind of kicked it off for the channel. Kicked the Instagram off, it kicked a lot of the Facebook off, kicked a lot of things off. We were being shared by like MSA Wheels, Super ATV. We were like, oh my gosh, this can't be happening. And it, it was happening. He had called me off a of buddy's phone wanting to know what I had done to it. Where did I get the front bumper, the rear rack, was it tuned, the exhaust, uh, the floorboards? And, and I was answering some questions and I said, yeah. I said, what are you doing this weekend? You wanna go riding? And the first place we took you was what, Deep Creek? It was just like they opened up in the year. For the year and uh, I said, let's go down to Deep Creek ATV Park. So we did. We got the whole game with us. Already dirty. You what? Already dirty. Say money. We talked the whole way there, pretty much while we were there and the whole way back. And when we got back, he was like, man, he's like, you ever need any help? Let me know. Well, that's when 
he says, he tells a story that, you know, when we're having dinner to stuff to people, he's like, you know, I punched in that day and he's never punched out. So, you know, we just become like best friends then. We've just become stuck like glue and we've done everything together since then. I mean, it's from riding to building stuff to off camera, on camera. I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy and how wild, how fast time has flown by since then. I feel like it was just yesterday that was happening, but it's been like four or five years ago. Jay Money. What's up? Are you pumped up for what we're doing for the Defender? I am. I am. You think they're going to be blown away? I think so. Definitely, Jay Money. The graphics, the plastics, everything on them. That was the move, right? Because I'm going to tell you, that's, sure. that's, that's some freaking one of a kind, dog. Like, really. Jay Money, yes, freaking sir, dude. That Outlander is absolutely freaking sick. See, right there. Ain't she a gym? <laughs> well, what y'all think? Dude, that was awesome. I'm pretty sure he was like speechless. He didn't know what to say. Yeah, I think he was speechless, but he that was pretty cool. Like. I yeah, thought he was about to cry. I was like, oh, don't do this. I'm going to start tearing up too. But me and Jay Money has been fixing it up. That's why you've not seen it on the channel for the past three months. So she is fixed up now and she's ready for Max and she's going to take off riding with it. What do you think about that, guys? The freaking 110 is snorkeled and it's sealed and we just walked through them ponds. It freaking does water wheelies. Little bit, Why don't we just sell the 1000s and get all 110s and there's baby water wheelies everywhere? Keep going, keep going. You got an inch. You got an inch. Uh, one more inch. There, there it is. It's right. How tall is this thing right now? Are we 12 o'clock or 12 o'clock? Look at this, guys. The Mud Mafia crew has purchased a huge hauler for all our toys. We gotta do some modifications this thing. Let's go. I told him my idea about starting a channel and we started the channel on October 29th, 2020. Our first video was a, the lift comparison between a 570 Outlander and a 570 Renegade still on the channel. Now those are some very, very cringy videos to watch. Like I don't even like going back and watching them. Like my, it's just not it's just not my speed I, it's just the editing wasn't there the filming wasn't there it was drug out there was all the dead space wasn't cut out like it was just it's awful but i leave it there to show progression and growth i leave it there to show you where we started and where we are now what's up guys i'm joe johnson i'm president of 336 mud mafia this is our 336 mud mafia youtube channel i run a 2018 can-am so we made that first video and it got way more views than we had subscribers. Now, I remember when I published that channel, I was like the first one to ever subscribe to it. I think KK was second, Daryl, he was third. I mean, it was just, it's a line of people. You know, that's, that's kind of how Daryl got in it as well. Daryl overheard me talking to Justin about starting a YouTube channel and stuff. And he was like, man, I kind of like what you're talking about. You know, I'd like to get in on that. So Daryl actually was a big help and a big part in the very beginning, which he still is now. But in the very beginning, we didn't have nothing to start with. So he bought us a set of GoPros. They're actually the DJI Osmo Actions. And he was pretty much into it as well as, as well as we are. And, you know, he wanted to be a big part in it. So he is, trust me. He's not in a lot of the videos, but behind the scenes, he's a big part. So we start the YouTube channel. And sadly, you know, Justin actually falls out and he goes and does his own thing. Well, there was another guy that wanted to be into it before I even asked Jay, and this is getting a little complicated to understand, but just kind of try to keep up with me here. Chris, he wanted to be in it, so we let Chris be in it. There really wasn't no other option at the time to give him the vice president seat because at the time, Jay was not a part of it yet. So now we have Chris as a vice president, and I told Jay, I told Daryl, I talked to Daryl and Chris, and I really want to bring Jay in because we, had, you know, we just went riding together. We started talking quite a bit, and I was like, I want to bring him in and let him ride with us. He's got a renegade, and you know, he's down to ride. So me, Daryl, and Chris all came up with the name Executive Vice President. And that was Jay Money's first title. He had it on his shirt, Executive Vice President. I think I surprised you with it one day because you were wearing the Charter Member shirts and come up, and I was like, Hey, man try this on I threw him a shirt and it said executive vice president and we rolled with that for about three or four months and uh, Chris you know he had some other obligations in life and he wanted to get out of it so when he moved out of it it was the only right thing to do was move my man Jay Money up he is the vice president from then on and you know still is I see you send this thing my man Right now. 
So here comes our, around our fifth to sixth video, and uh, Hog Waller is having the turkey bog down in Florida, Palaka, Florida. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy we've been watching on YouTube, O2 Off Road was going to be down there. I had messaged him on Instagram. I had like, we had like 200 followers on Instagram. He had like five, maybe 8,000, something like that. And I'm like, he might message us back. He might not. Pretty nervous. He actually messaged me back and I said, are you going to be at that turkey bog event in Palaka, Florida at Hogwaller? He said, oh yeah, I'll definitely be there. You guys going to come out? I said, yeah, I'm going to try to make it out there. And what's fun, we still joke with this, but with Dawson to this day, O2 Off Road. Now he's not really making videos right now, but uh, he's not, he's not winning anywhere, guys. He's actually doing pretty good with life. He's, he's doing the family thing and he's killing it. So at the time he's like, you know, we can talk and hang out, film a little bit together. I know you guys are new to YouTube. Whenever we're done riding for the day, you guys go back to your camp and I'll go back to mine. Don't just linger around my camp. Just, you know, just don't be weird not. He's gonna be so mad when he hears this in there. <laughs> so we get down there and I'm talking about instantly we became like best friends. I mean, it was like a, a light switch. I couldn't pry him away from our camp and you couldn't pry us away from his. Yeah. We were together the whole weekend playing cornhole. We even took my, my dad, my old man down there with us. It was probably one of the best trips we ever had. You know, it was a rough time coming back in the rain, wore out, 10 hour drive. But while we were down there, you know, one, I think our last night we were there, he's like, hey man, you know, are you editing your own videos? And I said, well, I'm about to start and you gotta figure out how to do it. He showed me the ropes through everything. He showed me the app to download on my phone. He showed me how to do it, what to film, what to look for to film, the dead space to cut out, cut the transitions, or use them, the transitions here, blah, blah, blah. He showed me a lot. Like, he sat down with us for like three or four hours that night, and we sat there and just took notes on what, how he done it and what he done. And he was a big reason why we started growing fast then. I mean, he was, he's a, he's a big factor in our success from the very early stages of it, and I can't thank him enough. I tell him quite a bit. We don't talk as much as we used to, but I'm, you can go look at all our descriptions of our videos right here below us. You go to the description, it says other pages or other channels I highly recommend watching. He is the first one on there. I think it's O2, and it's Braden, it's Kyle, and I think it's Miller maybe. But O2 it was a big, big, big inspiration and aspiration to us to be like. I mean, he had like 5,000 subscribers on, on YouTube, and we're like, oh my gosh, you know? We thought he was huge, and it was at the time. He's, I mean, it was huge to us that he was interacting with us. How does it feel to get beaten by the Mo Mafia? No, see what it is, brothers. I'm playing on y'all fours, y'all shirts. Let's fast forward to when we hit a thousand. I mean, that was huge for us. I mean, after we started the channel, I think it was like six months after we started our channel, we hit a thousand subscribers. And that was like, we, I think we even threw a party for that. I mean, it was like crazy. Like, oh, heck yeah, we hit a thousand, baby. We had a little over 4,000 watch hours, so we, we were eligible to become a YouTube partner. And uh, that's exactly what I wanted to do, you know? Now, now, mind you, I'm still working full-time. We all are. We're all full-time with this, and we're all full-time jobs and trying to do YouTube, like, one video a week, or maybe one video every two weeks, maybe one every three weeks. We wasn't getting a ton out. But we were approved through uh, Google AdSense and the YouTube Partner Program. We, we got it monetized, and we started tightening up our act. I was going by what Dawson had taught me for editing the videos, for making the right thumbnails, getting the right shots. It was a process, and we, we had a good flow going for a little while, for probably about a year and a half, two years. Years. I mean, we, we we done the same thing for about two years. All in this time period, I, we would sit down together, the, the members of the Mafia. It would be me, Daryl, Jay, KK, Big Cam. It'd be like the main people you see on the channel all the time. We was like, you know, we gotta come up with something new, something different, something, just something wild. We'd always be buying something different. Different four-wheelers, different side-by-sides, different dirt. We had bought all those pit bikes at one time. We had like six pit bikes at one time. We were just trying to figure out what was the click? What was the sauce to keep growing? Well, we were just trying to grow the channel as much as we possibly could. Yeah, even before 10,000 subscribers, I think it was around seven, yeah. 7,000 subscribers, we had this, we had this goal we had talked about of riding with these bigger guys that we had seen doing this thing. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, Kyle was the first one reached out to us or we, we we exchanged number whatever we did and we met up at fast tracks for the first time Dang. and once again just another one of our good friends exactly we kicked it off with kyle cullen 
Uh, it was like pretty much like the O2 off-road incident. We kicked it off and it was just become pretty good friends. He was, it was a big goal to us. This, this guy, Kyle, I think he was sitting at like 70,000 subscribers. Like it was huge. Like it was like, it was like, we thought O2 was big at the time. We were like, oh my God, we're riding with Kyle Cullen. So he met us there at Fast Tracks and we rode all day. And I think we even hung out later that evening, went out to eat and stuff. We was talking, we exchanged numbers and Snapchats and we were following each other on Instagram and it was just, it was going great. But definitely a good day park and definitely a park to at least check out for once. Joe, you didn't have to come flexing on us like this. Holy crap, dude. You were a joke when you said you were bringing the whole town. Ah! Woo! Hey, Cole. <laughs> God damn, what? Cole. Uh. Cole. Yeah. You good? And I remember telling Jay on the way home, you know, we, we've hit O2 off-road, we've hit Kyle Cullen. I think our next biggest stop was, you know, you guys know exactly who he is. He is the biggest off-road YouTuber in the world. He earned it. He deserves it. He is the man himself, Braden Price. A little before 10,000 subscribers, like maybe 8,500, 8, maybe 9,000. We met Braden Price down at Outback, North Carolina, and we actually got to ride with him. We were starting to get all these comments and comments and messages about when you're going to ride with Braden, when you're going to ride with Braden, when you're going to collab, when you're going to win just It was just non stop coming in. Now, I know he may have had a few on his channel as well, maybe not as many as we did, but we had a ton. When you're going to ride with Braden? Mafia, I have a link down in the description. Jay Money. What's up? Look at this. Oh, look. Looking good. Clean up. Check out the back. Oh, Looking Braden's gonna rock rocking the merch. Someone else decided to come out today. Joe, buddy, What's buddy, up, buddy. buddy. Are you ready? Up? Are you ready to sink some spoilers again? No. Joe, dude. What are, you, are we about to go break some stuff? I hope not. We're going to get stuck. We're going to get stuck. Oh, you promise me. Can, can you promise me we're getting stuck? Full sin. All right. Full Joe, sense. what did you think about today's ride? It was really dirty, dusty, kind of dry. dry. I dry? wish it had more water. Yeah, they definitely need more water. And I really like Joe and Joe's group. They seem all pretty freaking cool. I was actually looking to join the team before we hired Dylan. And I talked to Joe a lot. And I was very, very much considering hiring Joe on the team because uh, he's a bang up dude. But at the end of the day, I couldn't do it just because he had the 336 Mud Mafia channel. And I was like, man, you need to focus on yourself, focus on your channel. You come work for me, you're gonna realize very quickly it's gonna be hard to do both. So now he's focused on his channel, the 336 Mud Mafia. Yeah. Man, I would have loved to have him on the team otherwise, but uh, it is what it is. I think he's gonna go great places with his channel. Let's go up here and see if we can't find Joe. Joe, what you doing, dog? Going riding, even after that day, the first day of riding, we went and played, I think, Top Golf. Went back to his place, we shot cornhole. We just, you know, done what, you know, buddies do. We become really good friends with Braden. So at this time, I'm, I, I tell Jay, you know, we're at 9,000, like I said, 9,500 maybe subscribers. I'm like, man, you know, we've done hit both these big goals. What's our next, you know? So then we started shooting for numbers goals. Like, well, let's hit 10,000 subscribers and go from there. So during the process of us trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, Luke Cullen, comes in the picture after we rode with his brother Kyle that one time. And let me tell you this, Luke Cullen has been one of the biggest helps of our whole entire career here doing YouTube. Luke Cullen is by far one of the most nicest people, humble person you'll ever meet when it comes to help and advice on something he knows quite a bit about, which is cameras, editing, yada, yada, yada. He asked me, he said, man, what do you, what do you edit on? I said, my phone. What do you film with? I said, my phone <laughs> and he was like man you gotta get a camera we took his advice we went out on a limb and we bought the sony a6600 that is a dinosaur i feel like i mean she is old she's got the flip out screen on it i mean it was it was it was all that in a bag of chips back in the day like i was pretty impressed with it i mean it was it turned our content up a few notches like with quality uh confidence for sure because now we've got a camera and i was actually scanning my phone it has a little scanner on the side of this thing to it getting the mm -hmm. content off the sd onto my iphone and editing off my iphone still 
with using the 6600. Finally, Luke speaks to me again, and we're right there at 10,000. We're knocking on its door, and he's like, man, you need to edit on a software on a computer. So I said, Luke, what do I need? And he tells me exactly what I need. I go to Best Buy. He's got me in debt now, like four or five thousand dollars after this the laptop the software stuff all the little adapters you got to need and he, his little list went on and on like he just gave me this great big list but i was so hungry and still i mean i don't get me wrong i still am i was so hungry for youtube like i was like okay i just want to grow that's all i want to do i just want to grow i want to grow i want to put out banger content you know so I, I didn't even hesitate went straight to best buy bought everything he told me to buy and i'd get the softwares on my computer and i'm sitting there editing he's he's facetiming me through all these processes on how to edit what to do i mean he done switched everything up that i was taught from o2 off road to what he does and it's a whole new world. Like it, our content just boosted. It just skyrocketed. Like it was like, wow, these videos have turned into great. And I mean, I remember all the comments coming in about, you know, how are you guys this small? You guys are very underrated. Blah, you know, yada yada yada, and it, it, it gave us a big confidence booster on our channel. Lo and behold, we hit 10,000 subscribers at Fall Bash 2021. 2021, we hit 10,000 subscribers. Now think about this, guys. The Fall Bash before, we were being talked into starting a YouTube channel. So a year later, we hit 10,000 subscribers. At the same time, Kyle Cullen was hitting 100,000 subscribers. I just hit 100K. But Joe, Joe, what'd you just do? Let me see it. Ready, ready, ready? 10K, baby. Oh, shoot. Hold on, hold on. Right, take, take a couple zeros off. Yeah! yeah! So, I can't remember how it went, but somebody brought Kyle a cake. He had took a picture with it, whatever, for his video and whatever, Snapchat, and then he had marked out one of the zeros, took it off of his finger and, you know, licked it off his finger and left the 10 on there and then gave it to me for us hitting 10,000 subscribers. It, it was cool how, you know, we were a part of all that. We were a part of this growing journey for these with these guys. So then we're rolling. I mean, we are rolling. We've hit 10,000. That, that was like, that was huge to us because think about this, guys. You take 10,000 people and put them in a room. That's a lot of people. A lot of people. I feel like that was one of our big goals to hit was 10,000 because that's, it almost felt like you made it. Like, oh, I made it. I'm a YouTuber, you know? Like, you started getting noticed out in public. You started, at, people started asking for pictures. People started asking for autographs and people started, like, looking up to you and stuff. And it's like, one of the, probably one of the best feelings that we've ever had doing YouTube. As we uh, progressed and, you know, we started gaining subscribers pretty substantially, I'd say, you know, with our new editing and whatnot, we're getting pretty, what we thought was good at it at the yeah. time. Of course, we had companies um, start to reach out to us, and I believe our first sponsor that reached out was Mud Bandit Strap. And that was huge for us at it the was, time. It was crazy. Like, somebody wanted to sponsor us. Right. Mud Month. We made a, it was like a commercial, what we thought was a commercial for this strap. I was hung up, <laughs> he was pulling me out with Big Game, yeah. and we sent it to him. And like when you go on Instagram, you're scrolling or whatever. And they you got see, the promotion ads. Yeah, or like Shop Now or whatever. Yeah. And we seen ourselves that on was, Instagram. That was huge. It was wild. It was on Facebook. It was yeah. on Instagram. I had like a YouTube ad, like mm -hmm. I, like one of the like on their page. It was like had like over sixty some thousand views on Facebook, and it was it was nuts to us because that was something that. We thought of ourselves as being on like a, you know, oh, we're, we're on TV, we got a commercial, an ad, you know. Somebody, yeah. like, seen us as something they want to put their uh, name on. That was, that was very big for us at the time. You know, Dry Pocket Apparel, and they're actually still with us this day. You know, Mud Bandit is no longer with us, but Dry Pocket Apparel. They've come, I feel like they've come up like we are. Oh, yeah. Brian had just started out. I think he first started with O2 Off-Road as yeah. a sponsor. And I think maybe O2 may have put a bug in his ear about us, and, and he reached out to us, Brian did, with, a, with Dry Pocket Apparel and wanted to sponsor us. And he was pretty pretty new too. He was just starting out. He didn't have, you know, much followers. He didn't have a really big business at the time and neither did we. And I was like, you know what? I'm all for it, you know, grow with us. The concept was great. He sent us a few shorts and from there we took it and ran and we promoted him as much as we can like we do even to this day. We, we, he's on all of our intros. I mean, Dry Pocket Apparel, you know, really guys, we're not salesmen, but Dry Pocket Apparel is, it's where it's at. That's It's worth the money. He's got a great product. He's an awesome dude himself. Products came in today and we are super stoked that they're finally here. Y'all check it out and make sure y'all go check them out. Dry Pocket Apparel. Thank you guys for sending this stuff to us. We'll hit that promo code up here in just a minute, but y'all check out what we got. First up is our dry bag. It's 
gonna come in great handy putting our phones and stuff in there, maybe keys, wallet, debit card, cash, you name it, never know what you might need it for. Not only the dry bag, there's one set of our new shorts, our blue shorts, man. I cannot wait to try these out and wear these. Oh my gosh, I am super stoked and pumped. Got the dry pocket in there. Hey, check this out, guys. While we're sitting here for a minute, use code 336MUDMAFIA for your dry pocket apparel. It'll save you 25%. Trust me, I'm no salesman, but these things are the ticket. At the time that we were pushing with two sponsors, it was it was pretty big. You know, cool. like, hey, you know, we're sponsored by two different companies. We get the email. I think we hit 30,000, I think. Maybe 25, maybe 30,000. We get the email from uh, Gator Waiters. Mm -hmm. And that was like mind blowing. And we had a party for that one too. Oh, that was a big party because we've been wearing Gator Waiters all along already. And they wanted to sponsor us. And I, I've been seeing you. Braden was sponsored by them. Kyle was sponsored by them. I'm like, man, I, I really want to get on it. That's the only way to ride. That's, yeah. You're, you're crazy if you don't use Gator Waiters. That is the only way to ride with you know, the jackets, the hoodies, the waiters themselves, the, all the gloves. I mean, it's the, the camp boots. <laughs> the camp shoes, I mean, it's the only way to go is Gator Waiters, for sure. We do gotta give a big thanks right fast to Gator Waiters. They just sent us out our new waiters. In the description, it's gonna have a code. You go to Gator Waiters, and underneath all this, I'm perfectly clean. I'm telling you. The only thing money is my face and my hands. You're not gonna beat Gator Waiters, guys. We are all now suited up, got our Gator Waiter bog jackets on and our Gator Waiter. So then it's time we get to around the 30,000 range still, like I said, and Luke says it's time to upgrade again. I'm like, what do you mean you gotta upgrade? You know, he's like, well, you need some more cameras, you need some GoPros, you need you need something to uh, get different shots all the time. So he talks us into some more, uh, I would say, bad, financial in, you know influences but the concept's good at right? the same time i can't say they're bad because what it's, it's turned into is amazing like so what we're filming with currently now and what most of our filming goes into is with a sony a7s3 we've actually you know got our sights on a sony a7 IV. they don't have a 7s4 yet but we're pretty big with sony luke has turned us on to sony like we had the 6600 we're really big with our s3 we do a lot of filming and you know even up to this date we have several different lenses for it, different cages, mics, all kind of different accessories for it. I mean, we've, like, it's almost like we've fully built this camera. Like, it's like a full build. <laughs> so we upgraded the Sony a7S III and it's like, bam, the, the clarity of videos, the audio, it's like, wow. It's like, this is, this is it. We're, we're filming big leagues. We're, we got Netflix series shows right now. <laughs> That's kind of where we, we separate ourselves from Kyle, from Braden, from a lot of your, your riding channels. We don't, do the perspective of the GoPro as much. I mean, we have the mics, we have the helmet mounts, the, the chin mounts, all the stuff to be able to ride and vlog with just the GoPro on our helmets. But that's where we separate ourselves. We use this big camera as we're walking around and you're with us all the time. Like I'm holding it out here, I'm holding it, talking into it like you're seeing what I'm seeing. We get a couple GoPros and we're, you know, we rock them a little bit and it's just not our style. We still use them now to this day. We'll put them on the handlebars, we'll put them on the relocate, we'll put them on our helmet sometimes. I mean, it just depends on what we're doing. We don't try to overload it with a same content all the time. I know Braden, he's he's big with the GoPro stuff. Kyle's big with the GoPro stuff. We do it a little bit, but we're more more likely to use the big camera on most of our filming. So let's fast forward a little bit to like 40 to 45,000 subscriber range and it's time that I have my wedding. Now my proposal video for my engagement with KK is actually on the channel as well. So at the time, like, you know, I videoed the proposal. Now I need to video the wedding. So we got Luke and Vince to, to video for us and we had Miller edit the video for us while we were out on our honeymoon, me and KK. That was a pretty big event. We had Kyle come, we had Luke there, like I said, we had Braden Price, we had Julius, had Garrett. Yeah. A lot of YouTubers were there from our wedding and it was a great time, so to speak. I mean, you guys that was there, you guys remember, it was a heck of a time. Getting on into maybe the 50,000 subscriber range, Jay Money decides that he's going to um, pull the trigger on this big goal that me and him set together. Right. We, we talked about this since the day one, since that October 29th, 2020, about pulling up to the barn 
at Busco Beach. Reaching up there, I were holding the steering wheel and flipping a windshield out of an enclosed side by side. Never in a million years did I think Jay Money was going to go first, but he calls me and says, Hey, ma'am, will you ride with me to Brunswick, Georgia, which is the like lowest of Georgia you're about going to go. You can see the Welcome to Florida sign, I think, from, from Brunswick. <laughs> and uh, he goes, will you ride with me this Saturday? I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, where are we going to go? He goes, I'm getting the side by side, not knowing that he wants to leave at like 3.30 in the morning. We had to. So, and at the same time, he's so deep in Florida, us meeting halfway for both of us was like four and a half hours. Yeah. God, so, and And he wants me at like, what was it? We had to be there at 9, 9.30? Yeah. So, I... Yeah, it was like we left at three thirty. You didn't get it didn't get daylight outside to see on the highway till we got like no, somewhere we, on ninety five yeah, in South Carolina. We, yeah, deep South Carolina. It was, it was it was rough. I slept most of the way there. I tried to video as much as I possibly could. That video's on there as well. Going to pick it up. All right, good morning, guys. So what you just seen was uh, Jay Brown walking to the truck. He has no idea what we're going. At to this buy. time, he's burning my hole in my pocket now. He's got him an enclosed, and what we talked about doing together, he's already got one, and I'm still rolling around on Big Razor. So this side by side I've had for five years, Big Razor, I'm like, you know what? I think it's time to sell it. And I go without riding a side by side for a while, and I, I did ride Daryl's. We had this little agreement with the general, the gold and black general. I rode it for a little while. It just wasn't the same as having Big Razor or riding, like he was riding around the trails at nighttime, and he was wearing a polo shirt, and nice clothes and not getting dirty and muddy and i come back and i've got the old light brown eyebrows the beard's light brown from dust i'm like man this has got something's got to give so i get in contact with david loud with auto effects out in fayetteville north carolina and raleigh north carolina and i said we got to come up with something good and i want something nasty as you guys seen here comes the north star we added a little bit to add a little bit of flavor to this buggy particularly for joe We finally succeeded one of our goals. We're rolling up, pulling the windshield up, cranking the music up in our enclosed side-by-sides. I believe it's now time for one of the biggest hits of our channel. The North Star Defender was great. Black Gate, Gold Gate, Big Gate, Bumblebee, they were all amazing units, and they still are. Then it was time we come out with one of the baddest foolers on the internet. One of the very first 2023s fully built, fully powder coated front to back. We got a new fooler called Aquagate. We go all out this floor, we have a, a meet and greet with it, a show with it to reveal it to you guys. And we had like 600 people come out there to that dealership, which was uh, used power sports out of Reedsville, North Carolina. We had that show and everybody come out to see it and they were just, they fell in love with it. Now that KK1K is carrying my daughter, she does not ride the floor anymore. So I actually beat on it and abuse it quite a bit. Uh, not to mention that we just put you know clutches on it from Onkill Power Sports, which we're about to get to that. We picked up another sponsor and they sent us out some uh, STM full primary and secondary clutches, which was spot on. I mean, it opened that fuller up just wild. I mean, it's it's nuts where it come from. I'm telling you, you guys seen where I started with these fullers and where I'm at now. It's like, oh man, I never would have guessed fullers had this much power. I think now we're kind of pushing that range of like 65, 70,000 subscriber range that helped a lot. when Aquagate hit and it kind of boosted us a little bit. And then we get the call from one of our, probably our best sponsors we've got is Performance East out of Goldsboro, North Carolina. These guys are hands down some of the best people you'll ever meet in your life. Got the best deals, got the most inventory for side-by-sides, boats, four-wheelers, parts, trailers, you name it, they've got it there. Uh, great people, seriously. We wouldn't want to be in business with many other people than them. They're, they're really spot on with the, the hospitality, getting parts to you on time, helping you through problems, whatever the case may be, they're there. So now we're like, we're demoing all these machines that come out for, you know, performance seats and stuff and stuff's going, we're climbing, we're still growing. We're like at like 80, 85,000 subscribers. We're, we're almost up to date here and things are rolling on Kill Power Sports. 
Captain America, Josh Pope, same guy right there, all three people. <laughs> Probably one of the coolest people we've ever met. We rode with him at a mud bash and that's how he got his name, Captain America. He went and come to our tent and he bought a shirt. We were in the vendor's lot with Performance East and he bought one of our tank tops. Yeah. And he had this half shield Ronnie Mack style American flag yeah. helmet. You guys see it, He's, he rocks it every time he rides. And he had the halos, the red, white, and blue halo. Red and blue halos and red, white, and blue. Yeah, he had the halos. And turns out he's probably one of the coolest people we rode with. I mean, and like we've, we've met a bunch of cool people. Like right. Cody Ellis, the Outland, that guy on the Outlander, you know, he was from Maryland. That's something about these Maryland guys are got a weird accent, but they're really cool. Like I said, guys, at the very beginning of this video, we are not by no means some big, great big YouTuber. We're not the biggest. We're not the best by far. We're not cocky, we're confident. By far we're not the best, but we will compete with the best and one day we will be the best. I mean, it's you gotta have that mindset going into it. Now I know we're going through here pretty quickly guys, skipping about 10,000 subscribers or jumping every 10, 15,000 subscribers, but there's been a lot of major events from the time we were nothing to the time we are now. And you know, a lot of big thanks and shout outs to you guys for trusting us, believing in us, supporting us, having our back, uh, throwing up this right here. That right there is seen all the time. I mean, I could be in my own town, out of town, the beach, or at an ATV park, you, th you guys throw up the gang sign all the time and that you don't know how much that means to us. Like it it truly does my heart some good to see you guys throwing my sign up. That, that means a lot to us. Everything from down to you guys to our sponsors. Even we had a, when we had our cameraman, you guys know him, Jay Brown. Uh, he was a big help in the mafia. I mean, he was a part where when he was holding that camera, me and Jay was tackling other tasks and getting to stand on this side of the camera all the time instead of me behind it or just Jay behind it. Like it was a big help he started editing and i'm gonna tell you i mean he was becoming a really great editor now you know jay brown took his own path he wanted to stay more and focus in more sports and stuff you know i we wish him the best uh, there's no harm no foul there very proud of him you know how he's come today and how well he's done and accomplished would love to have another cameraman one day to, to kind of take over the spot of holding this camera and editing for us maybe here coming up in the future we might have an opportunity for one of you guys or somebody out there that's interested in being a cameraman and an editor for 336 Mud Mafia. I know this ain't the ideal video sometimes for some of you fans that want to see the banging content of us skimming, of us riding wheelies, of us breaking stuff, of us building stuff. And that's another big thing for our channel. We don't just ride, right. we also build. I and mean, we a lot of our stuff is in-house. I mean, as long as it's not like boring out the motor, the cylinders, stuff like that, we don't have any lays and machining work kind of tools for that. But Everything we do really is all built in-house ourselves. We, we assemble everything. We do a lot of our own builds ourselves. We, we do our own maintenance ourselves. So we do try to video some of that stuff from our motor heads on here, our guys that like working on stuff. We do the videos, the sending videos for the guys that want to see all the carnage and the party videos, the barn that want to see all the behind the scenes stuff besides the mud. And we try to broad this out for all genres of off-road world, I guess, so to speak. But I know there's some of you on there that's probably wondering a background too. I mean, a lot of you guys knew that I was a welder. A lot of you guys knew that you know, me and KK were high school sweethearts. A lot of you guys knew a lot of this stuff and there's still some things you may not know. Here's a, here's a, I'm gonna give him a fun fact. My son's getting ready to turn six years old. He's not on the channel much, but I have a kid that's six years old and he's a big part of my life off camera. I mean, he's a big part of my life when he, you know, on camera. Nine times out of 10 when I'm filming on the weekends, he's with me, you just guys don't see him. And I'll leave that option up to him when he's old enough if he wants to be on camera. If he don't want to be on camera, you gotta, guys, you gotta kind of accept that. Some people don't like the spotlight. I imagine if he, you know, coming from anything from me, he probably likes the spotlight. <laughs> but we'll let him make that decision when time comes. But for you guys that's wanting to know more about us, and I hope this kind of helped out a little bit. If you guys want to see more videos like this and more, you know, kind of documentary auto Biography styles about J Money, KK1K, Daryl, Big Cam, Cade. I mean, all the people we got in our, our group. You know, if you guys want to see more, we can make more. But I hope this kind of clarifies some stuff about Mud Mafia. I want you to know that Mud Mafia wasn't just thought of a couple years ago. This has been in my head since I was a boy, like a little boy, 11 year old. You know, I mean, a lot of help along the way. I can't thank the people enough that did help me to get to where I'm at now. We are currently sitting at like 91 and a half, almost 92,000 subscribers. Almost 8,000 away from a huge milestone. You know, I mean, 100,000. Think about it. A big plaque hanging in the shop. We need your guys' help to help us boost this 
tremendously. Like, get us that 100,000, that way we can get this plaque, because we got a special 100,000 subscriber video that we're gonna make, and uh, I think you guys will be enjoying it and liking it. It's probably gonna be one of the best ones this far, and I mean, it's, 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 been, it's been a hell of a journey. It's, it's a big milestone, I feel like. It's, it's really huge for us. We're really looking forward to hitting that 100,000 subscriber. I'm really looking forward to putting out more builds for you putting out more banger content the racing next year there's a lot more to look forward to with the mafia a lot new a lot of new merch coming with all that being said guys i hope this was a little bit educational for you guys hope you guys enjoyed the video we appreciate you all 100 percent. we love you guys and we don't just say that if you guys have met us in person you guys know you can tell all the others that we actually do mean it that we love you we we, we make all our time out while we're at these parks for you guys if you see us out in public never hesitate to ask us for a picture an autograph or just to come up and say what's up because you know we're going to talk to you we make our time for our fans please 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 make sure you're subscribed help us get to that hundred thousand goal mark it's not only for us but it's for you guys as well that you guys have grew with us this far make sure you leave a like and a comment let us know what you think do you want to see more videos like this like some documentary type things help spread the word share us around and for all your authentic 336 mud mafia merchandise visit www.336mudmafia.com just know we love you guys and we'll catch y'all on the next one.